hi guys thanks for coming back to another video um, we're going to take this video and we're just going to go ahead and finalize this uh, information in regards to Zarah uh, we went into a little bit of detail so that you guys could have some type of a foundational understanding as to where they were coming from and how they were merging with what we have been taught all of our lives um, Tamar and Judah had twins and the twins were Zerah and Perez. Now if you're not familiar with this story okay I need for you to go back you can either look at the videos that I've provided or you can go right to scripture yourself and go into Genesis 38 and then when you're done with that you can go into Strong's 38 and you can follow the pathway that the Lord led me but we're going to talk about the royal house of Zerah and the royal house of Perez. Now, um, the Lord has been leading us toward the toward red. He has been leading us toward um, toward the thread around the wrist. That led us to Genesis 38, and then from that point, the Lord led us to Strong's 38 and also Strong's 40. Um, so if you've not seen that video and you've not done that study on your own, um, I would, I would ask that you pause so that you can kind of catch up to where we are. Now, the royal house of Zerah, okay, and the royal house of Perez, um, we understand that there was a rift between these two and it was all regarding the firstborn rights. Would you not agree? One had the scarlet cord on its wrist because the arm came out and it was tied on there that he was born first. However, the arm went back in. And there must have been some struggle because then Ferez, the brother, came out, the one that did not have the scarlet cord. Ferez actually means brief, uh, breach. And so we know that there was some type of rivalry between these two regarding this particular thing because they had to go in and determine now who is the firstborn, okay? And how is this determined? Well, it came out to be that Perez was identified to be the firstborn. And that is coming down to from the house of David through Solomon, Zedekiah, and all of that, okay? And we understand Mary, Jesus Christ all comes from this line, okay? So that's fine. We understand that a lot of us are, are very familiar with that side of the history. But a lot of us have not been familiar with the other side of the history, the Scarlet Cord. Um, and so 2,500 years of, uh, of them being separated from one another until Zedekiah's daughter marries one of the Melisande kings. These are coming out of the line of Zerah, okay, the royal house of Zerah. And Zedekiah and his and his daughter is coming out of the royal house of Perez. And so when they marry, that is the union of the house of Judah once again. Okay? All right. So we don't need to go into too much detail here about Zedekiah, but we know that, that Zedekiah was attacked. All of his sons were killed before him. Then his eyes were poked out, and he was thrown into a prison for the rest of his days. Jeremiah, the prophet Jeremiah and his great granddaughter or granddaughter, I'd have to go back and see if it was grand or great grand, um, Tia. Now, I don't know if Zedekiah's daughter's name is pronounced T, Tia, Telfi, or what. Um, but I'm just going to say T for the sake of argument. Okay? So T um, and Jeremiah and Skota. Um, were able to escape out of that area, but along with them, Jeremiah also pulled and gathered David's harp, an ark, the stone, the destiny stone, among some other things. Okay? And they ended up in Northern Ireland, in Ulster, Northern Ireland. Now, where did that name pop up? Well, that area and that name popped up from when the Lord called me O'Hare. And he told me, you are mine forevermore. And he told me, you are part of them. Okay? And so when we, when I went to go look up the word O'Hare, I couldn't find anything on it. But my brother in Christ, Eric, provided some information. And he is the one that identified that that name is from Ulster. 
okay? That is an area in Northern Ireland, and it also indeed meant what the Lord told me, okay? Long-lasting, forevermore, okay? All right, so when Jeremiah and T and Skota were able to escape out of here, they had a lot of things happen to them. I'm not going into the detail. If you're interested in finding out exactly what happened to them, then you guys can go and study it out for yourself. But she married one of the Melisan kings, okay? And it was at that marriage that these two houses of Judah became one once again, all right? We looked in Genesis 49. We understood what was said to Judah in his prophecy from his father, Isaac, okay? I'm going to say Isaac, but it was, uh, I mean, not Isaac, um, Jacob, okay? Um, Israel. That's the name I wanted to say, Israel. Okay, so now that the merge is here, we see that it's pointing to the kings of Ireland and the kings of Scotland. Well, this is exactly where the Lord has been pointing us to begin with. So in order for us to find out what, what he wanted us to study, um, we had to go through all of this information so that we can get a history and a background as to what it is. Okay, so... October the 4th, I'm in the spirit. The Lord tells me about the Irish clan, the name O'Hare. I find out it's an Irish clan. He tells me to go study. So I did. And this is what I'm coming up with. Okay. But I had my friend Lou who, get, who said to me that very same day, a dream that she had. And it was dealing with the Tartan. And it was dealing with Scotland. Okay. And so when I explained to her what the Lord gave me, it confirmed what she dreamt and what the Lord gave her through a dream. Both of us are up talking about this particular area, and both of us were bringing up metal. I brought up uh, that the Lord showed me about Iron Man, and she brought up that it was steel. Okay? All right. So that's very important information. Things are being confirmed here. This is not the line of the Antichrist. Guys, please, listen to what the, the scriptures are trying to show you and the history books are trying to show you, okay? So I really want you to guys to just see. What I am trying to show you here is that there are two lines. And this is confirming what the Lord has been showing us and has been telling us all this time. He is saying there are twins, they are brothers, they are his, right? Okay, now, when I said something in the study the, in the last video, I explained to you something that was said that I found in an article and document, and this is what it is. When talking about Genesis 38 and, and the story between Judah and Tamar's birth of these twins, and that there would be a split Two, two different Judah historical timelines. This is what the lady said in this article. She said, these twins are also the sign of the coming Messianic twins. Okay? So this is the sign of the coming Messianic twins. All right? So I know a lot of you don't, you don't, that doesn't swallow very easy with you. Okay? We're going to be talking about that and I'm going to show you some things in Scripture by the grace of God sending me someone to confirm and help piece together all of this stuff that the Lord's been giving me over the years, um, I'm going to show you that this indeed and all the information that I have provided to you is the truth. Even though the Lord has already said it in the messages, what I'm giving you is truth. Okay, so I know a lot of you don't want to listen to it. Uh, that's okay. And if you don't want to listen to it, then I'm just going to say, guys, then just cut my video off. Just cut it off and go find something else to listen to. Okay, if you're interested in finding out what the Lord is telling me and the truth that he is providing that has not only been, been provided to you in all of these little different messages, but is now being confirmed, then I don't know what else to tell you guys. I'm not going to force it on you. I'm going to provide you the truth. If you have ears to hear, you will hear it. If you have eyes to see, you will see it. If it is meant for you, it will resound within you. And that's all I can tell you. Okay? All right. So let's go ahead and get started to finish this one out. 
there are a couple of videos um, I'm not videos articles that were very very interesting that I would like for you to um, take a look at I, I will provide the links to them but I went through and did a lot of reading and studying myself uh, coming and bringing it out all through um, all through scripture so the Perez and his descendants we know about this we know there was that that um, that split for 2,500 years. Um, but what is really interesting here is about the Zerah descendants. Um, the descendants of Zerah, of Zerah are mentioned in 1 Kings as the wise men of the East, which we know today uh, as the Parthia. Now, I'm thinking that's pretty interesting information because um, there is some scriptures here that identify um, that identify uh, there was only, um, let me see if I can find it. There was only so somebody, so, let me see. Okay. So the sons of Zerah, which are Zimri, Ethan, Heman, Calcol, and Darda, um, those are the five sons. And so if we look at 1 Kings, Okay. And God gave Solomon wisdom and exceedingly great understanding and largeness of heart like the sand on the seashore. Thus Solomon's wisdom excelled the wisdom of all men of the east and all the wisdom of Egypt. Um, so he had the spirit of he had the spirit of understanding. He had wisdom. He was given wisdom. Okay. Um, and so we know that he was seeking the Lord. That's the only way you would be able to get such wisdom and understanding. Now listen what it says here. For he was wiser than all men. Okay. Then Ethan, Heman, Calcol, and Darda, the sons of Mahal. Okay. Well, this is Zerah's sons, right? Let's go back. The sons of Zerah, okay, we don't see Zimri, but we see Ethan, Heman, Calcol, and Darda. So this is what I'm saying is there's, there's, there's something very significant about this line, okay? Um, and they are also um, very wise people. Now for them, to, for this to be identified that he was wiser than all men, he was wiser than Ethan, wiser than Heman, wiser than Calcol, wiser than Darda, then he's saying here, okay, then these were obviously wise men if he is showing that he was wiser than, than them. You understand what I'm saying? So it's very interesting information in regards to um, what I am finding just a little bit more. Um, and so you guys can go look through this, uh, this particular article. I also found another one, The Mystery of True Israel, and I will provide this one for you. Uh, before going through Egypt, before going to Egypt, the tribe of Judah was split into by the birth of two sons. Okay, so when this happened, they were not in Egypt yet. Okay. In Egypt, Joseph was married to the daughter of Poti Parah, the priest of On. Now, somebody must have something going on that she is some type of an alien. Um, but this is right here is getting ready to negate that. Um, it's saying that it was very possible that her father was an Israelite. And the reason I say this is that the two sons which were produced by this marriage, Manasseh and Ephraim, were completely accepted by their great by their grandfather Jacob Israel who adopted them it is highly improbable that Jacob would have given these two boys his blessing right if they were sons of an alien now interesting how a lot of this stuff likes to get thrown out right oh no that person's an alien uh, because they you know they want to negate what's being shown they they want to negate the truth they want to cause some confusion and insert some fear 
Um, so I just want to say this, guys, be very, very careful about what you're saying about certain people, okay? Later, these boys became two became the heads of two tribes, displacing Joseph. Now we're we're understanding this. We know that um, we know that Manasseh and Ephraim are Britain and America, okay, or the Commonwealth and America. Let me just say it that way because the Commonwealth is more than one nation, okay. So when we're looking at this in terms of tribes. This made a total of 13 tribes, but later Levi was elevated to the position of civil service and was not numbered with the rest of Israel. So once again, there were 12 tribes. See Numbers 1 and 26. Okay. So there is extra biblical outside the Bible evidence that some of the descendants of Judah left Egypt when the persecution of Exodus 1 began. Okay. At this time, Israel probably numbered about 2 million people. Exodus 1 says they had increased abundantly and multiplied uh, until the land was filled with them. And, and this, of course, was one of the reasons why Pharaoh was so afraid of them, right? So it is important for us to understand that in the view of this, of this um, a majority of preachers who teach that the Jews are all of Israel, they refer to a modern Jew as of Judah. But we should also remember that for 3,400 years of history, which is recorded in the Bible, there were no people called Jews anywhere in the world, and that today's Jews are not Judahites. Okay. So again, we come back to yet another person that is saying not everybody is Jewish. Okay. We are not following the Jewish line through the Perez side. We were following the Hebrew line through Zerah. All right. So the Zerah tribes of Judah, from what I can find in my research and study, were never slaves in, G in Egypt and were not part of the biblical exodus outside of Egypt afterwards. Okay. Now, let's talk about Judah had five sons, three by a Canaanite woman named Shua. They were Ur, Onan, and Shelah. We talked about this in one of those videos. We know Ur died, we know Onan died, and Shelah was supposed to be the third son promised to Tamar, but he was not given to her, okay? And so Tamar went out, pretended to be a harlot, um, Judah came upon her, and that's where the union happened, and she conceived. She had the two twins. Okay? All right. Let's continue. Judah's two other so sons that were born to Tamar, the daughter-in-law, were the twins. We know that Perez means breach or split. We know there was a rivalry. And Zerah had two sons, Calcol and Dar, and, and it says Darder, but it's actually Darda. And he has been called a couple of other things, and we'll see that in some of these other um, scriptures. So from the Perez branch of the family came the line of Jesse, David, uh, and Solomon. This was the only branch of the Judah family which was which formed a tribe and remained in Palestine. The other descendants left Egypt and moved to various parts of the world where they are identified by secular history. Okay. Of the three, son of Judah, Selah was the firstborn according to the Hebrew custom and entitled to the birthright blessings. Okay, so what is what are they talking about here? Where they're talking about Judah had five sons, but three were by a Canaanite woman. And recall that Ur died, God killed him. Onan died, God killed him. Shalah was left. So out of this union by the Canaanite woman, he should have firstborn rights. That's what he's talking about here. He was entitled to the birthright blessings, but he was rejected in part because of his mother having been a Canaanite, which would have contaminated the bloodline of the Messiah. However, Shelah and his descendants were of Judaite stock. 
Selah bore a deep resentment toward his father Judah because Judah had not kept his word by giving Tamar, this pure-blooded Hebrew girl, to him for his wife. This gave Tamar the excuse to play the prostitute, and from that time on, there was an unfriendly relationship between the two groups. Okay, so we get there's there's a lot of resentment, there's a lot of issue going on with this, um, and but we're understanding, we're kind of understanding what's going on. So. Shayla uh, left Palestine on some of these ships and migrated to what we know uh, today as Ireland, okay? The word Ireland actually means land of the Hebrews, all right? So we just want to say that that's pretty interesting. So now when we come down here and we're looking at the Perez and the Judah part, about the time when Shelah's descendants were arriving in ancient Ireland, we found Kekal, okay, we know that's the son of Zerah, had founded the ancient Irish line of kings, which had been planted in Ulster hundreds of years before the time of Christ. Okay, so when, when he left to go on the ships to go to Ireland, he found that Zerah's son, Kekal, had already been there and had already, had already created the kingship there. Okay, so we understand also too um, that Darda. Now here's the other name instead of instead of Dard or Darda. There there will be other. Here's one Darda Nellies. Okay, um, many of the Darda branch of Judahites of Zerah's Judah left Egypt to settle Darda Nellies and the Hebrus River in ancient Thrace. This latter branch of Judah founded the ancient city in Troy, which was destroyed um, by the Danoi of Greece. These Danae were from the tribe of Dan, which had split into three sections, with about a third of them settling in Greece. Um, so it's very interesting how these are all starting to intermingle now. We look at the Darda, it says, while the main, okay, no, no, following the destruction of Troy, the Trojan king Brut, or Brit, migrated with many people to an island to the northwest, which is named Britain, or Covenant Man, Men of the Covenant. Very interesting um, definition of that word. And St. Peter's Church in London is a stone mon monument which comm commemorates the arrival of the Trojans in about 1075 BC. Traces of these same people have been found in Scotland. While the main body of Darda, Zerah, Judites went to Britain, okay, here again, while the main body went to Britain, some of them settled in what we now know as Spain, where they named their land Ibera or Iberium after their father Eber, but the Hebrew word means chosen or elect. So guys, it's very interesting information. You can go through here and see what it says. Now, I just want to say this. There seems to be a connection in the story of the Scarlet Thread of Zarah and the fact that it is accepted in so many customs in the, uh, of the British, even at governmental levels. The red thread is woven into every inch of the ropes, which are used by the British Navy, which, uh, with the exception of one naval yard where the color is blue, all British official documents are tied with a red ribbon. All British possessions on their maps are marked in red. It is also the official color of the Royal Guard, the Royal, Mounted, uh, Royal Canadian Mounted Police. Could this possibly have some significance? And so, guys, we know, too, that the color, the color scarlet is interwoven in the veil. It's interwoven in the, um, uh, in the, in the robes of, the, um, of the, um, the ones who tend the tabernacle. Um, that red is interwoven in there. And I'm, so there, there is some significance to this. Um, and so this is something that you can't just disregard and say, this is Satan. This is the line of the Antichrist. This is, you know, you're Satan. You know, <laughs> guys, because you don't understand it, you should not attack it. You should pray on it and you should ask the Lord about it. If you haven't seen this in scripture before, uh, even if you have been studying all your life, 
then welcome to my world. I haven't seen it in scripture before, and I've been studying as well, maybe not as long as some of you all. Obviously, I've had some tell me how long you have been studying and how familiar you are of the scriptures, and this makes no sense to you. Um, but guys, I'm here to tell you, I'm following the Spirit, and I am telling you what the Lord is telling me. And I'm sharing it with you so that you can follow along and have your eyes open to the understanding of what the Lord is trying to show me. Um, so guys, let's continue moving forward. Uh, something else here I would like to say. A close study of your Bible and of secular history will reveal two Israel trees growing. Okay, let me say that again. Two Israel trees growing. That should, that should pop up a scripture in your mind. One was in Palestine and the other in Europe and the British Isles. At this time, which was about 1000 BC, we find this break, breakdown. So in Palestine, Jacob's family of Simeon, Naphtali, Issachar, Asher, Zebulon, Dan, Ephraim, Manasseh, Gad, Reuben, Judah, and Benjamin. There were also some Ishmaelite Arabs, of which were Abraham's blood, who were not Israelites. In the British Isles, we find the descendants of Shalah and the Danans and the Trojans. Okay, so we know some of those Trojans are of the Zerah side who settled in Hibernia and Britain. So now we know what Hibernia means, um, land of the um, uh, Hebrew, right? And then Britain the, is the... Um, um, The word is, is escape me, um, covenant, covenant man, the covenant man, okay? So in, interesting about this. Both these trees were rooted in Shem. Okay, let's come back. If you watched my video a couple of times back, then you know that I showed you that Tamar is a descendant of Shem, who is a son of Noah, okay? So both of these, what? Trees. Again, scripture should be coming into your mind. Were rooted in Shem. Each had a priestly order of the Levites working among them. Each had a king from the tribe of Judah reigning over them. About 975 BC, Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, became king uh, on the death of his father, and the nation was immediately split over the issue of the exorbitant taxation Solomon had imposed to build the temple and his PSB, I don't know what that is, in Jerusalem. God used, now listen, listen, listen now. God used this trouble to split the nation of Israel when Rehoboam assembled an army of 180,000 men to fight against northern Israel. The prophet warned Judah, you shall not go up nor fight against your brothers, the children of Israel return every man to his house for this thing is from me. So when we see that there is a separation of these tribes, we see it in we see it when Israel and Judah were separated. We see that the 10 tribes went to the northern kingdom. We see that there were two tribes left in the southern kingdom. Okay? We see that there is a split. We saw it when there. We saw it with. We saw it with Judah and Perez. Okay, so these are. It's coming back again and back again and back again to show you there is two. There is two. Okay. So when we look at, um, we heard a little bit more about the tender twig and the royal house of David. We 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 read what that meant. We we understand that. This was all dealing with a prophecy that tea was taken and, and put into um, Ireland um, and because and to be planted there. So we understand what that meant. You can go back into that video and, and look at that prophecy and the information that was provided with it. But here I want to, I want to uh, bring something to your attention that the word mountain as used in the Old Testament refers to nation. Now, guys, one of the first times that I entered into the Spirit, and I have shared this in a video, um, when I entered into the Spirit, I looked up at the sky, and I saw a face. 
And then I looked back down and I looked up again and I saw the face now of an eagle. So the first was the face of a man. The second was a face of an eagle. Okay. And then when I looked up a third time, I saw mountains, not one mountain, mountains. And so now I am understanding that those mountains that I saw are representing nations. Now, in messages that the Lord was giving me right around that time and in the next time that I went into the spirit, and this is all already shared in all of those videos. Okay, you guys can go back and listen to it yourselves. Um, the, la the next time I went into the spirit, the Lord called me Ariel. Okay, Ariel. And we know that that meant that was something about the lion. Okay, you can look it up. What's the meaning of the name Ariel? And so I understood then um, in some of my study time and the messages that were given to me from the Lord at that time, he told me, he said, I have given you the lion's authority. I have given you the lion's authority. So I don't know if you remember any of this stuff or not. If you've been following my videos, maybe you do remember it. But I'm going to tell you guys, this is all tying in together. Every single bit of it is tying in together. The Lord said, I'm going to let you know who you are, and I'm going to let others know who you are. Okay? It's important. We're being shown things right now. So again, if this is resounding within you, then it's probably for you. Okay? I need for you to listen with your hearts, listen with your spirits. Okay. Following the uh, Assyrian invasion, the Israel olive tree was broken. Again, the scripture should be in your mind. The Israel olive tree was broken. The ten tribes in the north had been deported to Assyria, and all that remained were the tribes of Judah and Benjamin, and with some of the Levites, with the king of Zedekiah and the house of David, ruling over Jerusalem. And then we know what happened after that, right? Okay, you can also go in and take a look at the nation of the Jews. I'm not going to get into all of this because I'm being pointed to one particular place. Okay, um, let me come into the last part. This one here, the modern descendants of Zerah. And, uh, and there's a lot of information in here. Uh, I just want to read just a few things. When Jacob, Israel, gave his dying blessing to his 12 sons, he associated each of them with some animal object or personal characteristic, which afterwards would become the emblem of the tribe uh, descended from him. Among those, the lion, okay, because a lot of you were asking about the lion. What are you talking about, that red lion? This is what I'm, I'm going to provide for you as an explanation. Among those, the lion, the emblem of Jacob's fourth son, is, uh, son Judah, is of special importance. The lion laying down, when you see one in a laying down position, become the emblem of the tribe of Judah. Then in a passant position, it became the emblem of the camp or brigade of Judah. And later, with the addition of a crown, it became the emblem of the royal house and throne of Judah. Still later, in rampant, now rampant meaning standing on its hind legs with both forelegs elevated, uh, postured with a crown, it became the symbol of the two-tribed house and kingdom of Judah. Two-tribed house and kingdom of Judah. So let's take a look because that was the coat of arms of Northern Ireland that I had provided um, in, the, in the first video um, cover. So here it is, on its hind legs with its arms protruding, okay? So this is, this is the rampant lion, all right? So that's what I'm talking about here. So let's, uh, let's see here, okay? Yet this lion, usually portrayed as tawny or golden in color, is not the only em emblem of the descendants of Judah or, e or even the lion, only the lion. In the last four verses of Genesis 38, we find the recorded birth of the two sons, uh, the t uh, of the two sons to Jacob's fourth son, Judah. And so we understand about the breach, okay? 
And so it says here, this was one of the most important events recorded in Bible history. The births of many great other people are recorded in the Bible, but this one case, only the details are given in this one particular case. Why is this particular birth signaled out for such special attention? The birth was a matter of great and special significance because Judah's other sons could not inherit the prophetic promise that from his descendants would come a royal family of the nation of Israel. This was because they were the children of a forbidden union and their mother was a Canaanite. Okay, we talked about that in that other article. Therefore, with the, uh, with the older of these two boys destined to be ancestors of the future, future royal family of Israel, the question of which of them was born first and therefore the heir was a matter of very great importance. It was also, as the Bible shows, the basis of the beginning of a very serious family trouble. Well, we, we're understanding that, um, and so we get that. And so we know um, the hand came out first, and then the other one came out. Um, and so whose birth was completed first? That was the question, and that was what they had to determine. And so eventually Perez was declared the rightful heir, and from him descended the official branch of the tribe of Ju Judah and the Davidic royal house. Now, how did Zerah and his descendants react to this? Well, they felt like they were robbed of their inheritance. And uh, they left the main body of Israel during the time of the bondage in Egypt, or right, right before, or as thing, or maybe as things were getting ready, getting heated up and ramped up. But it becomes very clear that when we examine tribal genealogies as recorded in the Old Testament, they were not there. These record the main lines of descendant from the Perez Judah for a very long period of time, but the record of the descendants of Zerah apparently ends with the third generation. Since these genealogies, especially those of chief families in each tribe, were kept with great care. Now guys, think about it. We know the Bible is very detailed, especially when it comes down to genealogy and who begat who and all of the numbers and they're keeping up with the census and all of that. It's all very important. Why? Because they're trying to show you things within all of this. Okay? We know that this happens. So we know that these genealogies are kept with great care and any omission would indicate that those omitted were no longer in the land when the record was made. So the genealogy of Zerah ceases with the third generation. It naturally follows the question, well, if they weren't there, where'd they go? Okay, and that's where all of this has been, follow, been following since that time. Since they were descendants of Judah, their emblem was a lion. Okay, it is very unlikely that they would give up this emblem of their identity and descent. Most of them don't. They keep it. And even though bitterly resentful toward the rest of the tribe of Judah, they kept the lion as their emblem, but added their own variations to show that they were separate and distinct um, from the tribe in Israel. In their bitterness, they would make the difference as great as possible without actually doing away with the symbol. So instead of the tawny, the tawny uh, laid down lion, the golden laid down lion, they depict theirs as both rampant and red. And as a result, the rampant red lion became an emblem of the Zerah branch of the tribe of Judah. Now, guys, there's this goes in to talk about the other emblem, which happens to be the red hand. We talked about that as well. Um, and then we know that um, when they started migrating, they started breaking up into different groups and where did they go? Um, and that, you know, uh, different things are coming up here. But now I want to say this, that when they went in and they started, uh, when they started going into uh, the, the area of Northern Ireland, we, we see here that three of Ulster's six counties, as well as tan, towns of Bangor and Dungannon have the red hand as part of their official emblems. Now guys, I'm going to say something. As soon as I saw that word Bangor, I, I almost fell out of my chair because that was one of the very first words that the Lord audibly told me in the middle of the night, probably about four. Well, let me see, uh, probably back in 2012. And what what is it now? 2018? So it's been some time. As soon as I saw that word Bangor, and this was before I was even keeping up with my dreams, 
Um, I wasn't keeping a journal at that time. I was studying and pressing in. I was praying with the Lord. Um, he was starting to open my ear. He was starting to give me one word at a time, having me study it, you know, find out, research about it. Of course, I didn't know anything about Bangor. I thought it was Bangor, Maine. Of course, that led me to a dead end. I really didn't know what was going on. I watched that area for some time. Um, but here, when I pulled this up and all of a sudden it said Bangor, I said, oh my goodness. Even all the way back then from the very beginning, the very first word that he ever gave me is tying into this as well. So there is some significance to this, guys. Um, by the use of the red hand, some of the people of Scotland also port, point to their Israelitish origins as descendants of the Zerah branch of the tribe of Judah. So guys... Um, there's a lot of other information here. I would like for you to take a look at it. This goes into um, the son of Darda, and um, it also goes into where they settled, um, and it comes into Britain, and, and all, all on and on and on. But I will provide this article for you. Um, so what I am just trying to show you here, guys, and I'm going to bring it back. i got to come back to this. Again, I'm using this. I didn't create this, so if there's an error in it, um, you know, I apologize. But I'm not using it to prove every single piece. I'm using it to prove the two houses here and that they were separated and that they did come together. There were two brothers. They were twins. They are his. We saw that in that article, he did this thing. He separated Israel and Judah. So there is some significance as to why, okay? So we are going to be talking about some of the things that the Lord has told us in the past videos um, that many of you all did not like, but I am going to provide some information for you. Um, I had a brother in Christ come to me and provide some of the missing information and started the information that I was being provided started tying all of those little bits and pieces all together. The Lord has been trying to show us this for quite some time. Um, so guys, I will come back in the next video and go ahead and share that with you. Um, God bless you. Stay under his wing until we speak again. Bye.